right then. Okay then, so this is an attempt at going through how I set up the assembler for SJ ASM Plus. So if I just got a command line and sudo OneDrive, cd loop next, and have a look in here, drstar.bat, I have two batch files, um, which I've also set up in here. Get rid of that one for a second, get rid of that, and then go to the build file, which I actually called elite build.bat. And here, just experiment around a bit. So you, there's an option that you can use an uh, environment variable and set up the parameters, but you could also use them directly in line. I was playing around with it, tried them both. One to watch out for is on the ZX Next, I use C-Spec to enable the C-Spec additional commands, such as break. Um, if you put it in there, then put it in your options in your code, then it op complains if you haven't put equal C-Spec in there as well. So I just put it in there now, and I have includes in there for the paths. Mistake I made because I was trying to understand why my stuff wasn't assembling properly, and I thought it was a path issue. So I did the stupid thing of taking out a load of paths and now put them in there. So I've got to clean that up after. My target is elite next asm as a source code, um, and LST through there. And then I go into the code itself. So my main piece is a driver is this assembly. So before this, I use snazm, which comes with cspect. Um, so I've got obviously C spec map out there, and I put in this is important for um, SJAS and plus uh, opt also important. So if you do here, so if I do type delete program, delete build dot bat, there's that you've got SJAS and plus there for the command line instead of previously I had snazm. Important thing here, which is what probably spent me the best part of an hour trying to work out why the hell my code wouldn't work, is that labels must start on the first line. If it's not a label, it must not start on the first sorry first column. And if it hasn't got a label, if it isn't a label, it must start at least one character in. So I'll just use tab. Um, I, what I found the first time I did the assembly was I got loads and loads of errors saying I was trying to redefine the word include work out that what it was and eventually looking through the guides I noticed the comment said that labels must start in column one so just assumed that that was the issue and it cleared a lot of problems out. This is a whole section from um, SNASM on how to set the code banks up. So you set a segment, you set a bank number, the start of the bank and then the address where it actually, uh, so that's like an offset, an address of where the code actually assembles to. Um, so that was had to be all converted to uh, work with SGLs and Plus, and I'll go down to that in a little bit. Um, important thing here is all the labels. One trick I found was in SNASM, you use at with the label name for um, local ones, local to another label, and SGLs and Plus full stop as a prefix on there. And I'll flip through some code in a little bit on that. Um, low and high in SNASM, it's LO as a bracket function, HI as a bracket function. So just did a mass replace of those. Um, going down here, down to the includes, again, all indented there. That was very important. And now we come to the stuff about banking. So, it's not perfect world here, but what I've done is, slot is the bank that you want to use. Now, because I've set the directive up here on the option to device equals spectrum next, it knows to work in 8K banks. So, hopping down to here, these are environment variables, and I, sorry, um, symbols, I will find all, I will find it all on there. And you see here, in the memory bank defined assembly, it's equal to C00. Um, for SGLs and Plus, it either wants the bank number or it will work on an address. So you have banks 0 to 7. C00 is the one for that. And the other bank, which is a seven, bank 7, is E00. So what I have is I work with two banks. 
and I flip code in and out of those two. So I have a main core that's starting at address 800. And then I flip in and out primarily these two 8K banks to work on swapping in and out of code. Generally, I'm working for the idea of things like utility route routines tend to sit in the E series and logic tends to sit in the C series because of things like, say, displaying galactic chart status, market areas like that require line drawing um, and layer two and layer one stuff. So I put that in there and I can flip in and out layer one, layer two or sprite routines to generate while still keeping the main menu one in place. Um, also, things like the galactic chart data is in the um, slot as well. Let's say galaxy data there. So rather than a traditional elite way of calculating the uh, seeds on the fly, all I've done is pre-compute them to save a bit of processing time when the game's running because as I've got two mega memory on the, on the machine, I might as well take advantage of it. So, jumping back to these slots then, so you have a slot there, which is set to C00, which is slot 6. Page is, sorry, so again, slot 0, C00 there. Page is the page number. Find all files, I'm going to go to here, and see page number is equal to 50. I've also set a whole load of defines all the pages, and I'm basically keeping my notes in there. So I've got one for each galaxy, because the Elite has eight galaxies. This is the data for each ship. So when you're playing the game, the game can have up to 13 ships um, or asteroids or, or, or items running. Um, rather than having a whole great big heap and stack and malarkey and dealing with that, I thought, you know what, each one can have a bank. And then what I do in the logic, I just flip the bank, see if there's anything in there, process it. Flip the bank, process, flip the bank, process. And actually even mirrored the code in there as well. Which I'll go to. So you have slot for the memory location, page for page number. I don't think this org is actually needed, but I left in. It just helps me as a pointer as well. So I'm saying the org of the code is going to be the address, which is C00, but it also has a bank alignment as well, so it knows to put it in the right place. And then each bank has the um, different bits of routines, like sprite, memory, console, image, for drawing the cockpit on the ship, um, and it, um, and here's the universe logic. Now, the important thing universe logic is, the way I've designed it is I've written all the code for handling universe manipulation, for like, say, if you've got a cursor location area, it's like that, all in one bank, and then I clone it through the banks. Now, the important thing there is as well that I have in startup routine, it copies the data from bank, copies the code from bank zero into bank one, to bank two, into bank three, so that I know that when I call a routine, all I have to do is page in the right bank, and I know that the routine to call is going to be the exact same piece of memory each time for these banks, so the code stays. It's a bit inefficient in the effect that the universe replicates the code six times, but it massively simplifies the main branch, main loop logic. I'm just flicking in and out pages and running the same routine. Important thing here to watch out for as well is later on when I show how to build the .nex file, each bank will only get written out by the way I've done it if it's got at least one non-zero byte in it. So each block I've just said, right, set the first byte to um, FF and then just define space which default zeros in. And that follows all the way through as a common theme. Same with the galaxy data. So to write the next file out, which is the bit I struggle with a little bit, I've got simple case of open the file, start in there. Um, I can't relate. Let me just get the notes upon Snazzle. I forgot completely what that bit means. The seven F. So if I go to here, S J Asm plus. Uh, dot any x file format save next uh, hopefully it will go in there save next save next guide so open there file sorry entry stack address and entry bank dot 16k opens the start address stack address so you find start address stack address the 16k map to be before it's executed so that's actually a stack location. So then we save the next CFG. If I go to here, 
and CFG sets the border, sets the file handle, preserve rec regs. The important thing is what I was after was this, to tell it it needs two mega RAM. Because when I write out the blocks, unless you say that, it ends up a situation where it complains then, saying you haven't specified two meg, therefore I can't write. Uh, save next auto. Now this is the really clever bit I really like. Not only does it save your code, but it goes through each bank in turn. If they've got at least one byte in them, it will write out that bank into the NEX file. Now, the NEX file format is in 16K blocks, not 8K blocks. So I spent a good half an hour trying to work out why I couldn't get it to work in 8K uh, blocks until I was told, actually, that the next format has 16K. And then finally, save next code just for cleanliness. So... That's ultimately absolute billy basics of this um, SGASM plus conversion. And I think when I took my code from c -Spect, it took me about three hours to convert it um, while working out what to do. And the reason why I did that was because I started getting some problems with the size of my code and some really weird compilation assembly issues that it got to the point where it would just do pass, pass one and fail with no error message. Couldn't work it out, went to the newer version and found I couldn't get it to assemble more than about 4,000 lines because it didn't seem to like my includes. And then I looked at a few people's posts on the Facebook Zex Spectrum Next group and it seems to be it was the um, tool of choice to use SNASM Plus for a few people, so I thought I'd go for that. I've not got to the point where I'm using Visual Studio Code yet and. Um, the Z80 disassembler had a quick go at it, but it was only a very short burst. Hence, the reason why, as a test, I've got my launch JSON file there while well, I've been trying it out. But at the moment, I'm quite happily used to see spec debugger within the system. But um, it's got a very nice uh, remote bugger within Visual Studio set up with the plugins. What I will show you, though, finally, though, is about local labels. So in the world of uh, snasm use at symbols for local labels i have you i found in here use full stops one of the things i was getting the problem with with uh, snasm as well was i started to run out of labels it started complaining that i got too many defines um but it didn't fail properly it just sort of failed silently i don't quite know what was going on there but it seemed to just be if i delete a whole bunch of um, defines in the block sections up here um, it suddenly started started assembling again and then put them back and it went into a bit of a mess so this doesn't seem to have so much of an issue there um, dots give you local labels you would but when you're in c spec it acts as if you're at symbols so i'll quickly show that and if I go to elite build, hopefully this will build. Therefore, that's how fast it goes. One complete, three complete, zero warnings. I like to put the arrows on as well. So I will go elite run. And it pops up, goes through there. Pops through fine. That one's still a bit messy. Go through there. Notice as well that the colors are all off because I need to set some logic to, to configure the palette myself um, galactic chart what I'm testing at the moment is working out the fine fine stuff so working out that for some reason I've got the code to say work on one key press only and it still auto repeats so I've got some little issue it's also dealing with screen changes so there go there and that's even knock it out go through there still got my, my random flashing block and I also find this is a hit accelerator, it crashes. So I've got a little bit of tidying up to do for that. I think that'll be my next job. So I will stop recording here and at least get this thing posted and see you all soon.